Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video, I'd like to focus on the probability of a dice. Now, dice come up constantly through many different textbooks dealing with probability just because of the randomness that occurs when you roll a dice. Now, dice are very special because they have six sides, at least a standard dice does, and each side has an equal chance of coming up. We're not talking about a weighted dice where you roll it and one side is favored more than the others. This is just a regular dice, six sides, each have an equal chance of occurring. Now, before we get into this, let's just do a quick recap of that introduction video. Remember, probability stems down to a single sentence. That sentence is how likely something will happen. Really, we're just trying to figure out there's an event that takes place. What is the likelihood of that thing occurring? And then we also talked about how probability is usually talked about with percentages. But for my videos, we're going to focus on it as a fraction. Okay, remember, fractions are your friends. They're not that scary, just as long as you know how to use them when you're solving different problems. Now, let me go ahead and write out that probability fraction that we came up with so that we can use it for these examples. So remember, that fraction that we're creating, we have our numerator on top, our denominator on the bottom. The numerator on the top is the number of ways that it can happen. It referring to the thing that we want to occur in the event. What goes on our denominator is the total number of possible outcomes from that event. Another way of talking about the total number of possible outcomes, the fancy word that we learned was sample space. And remember, sample space is really what that says there. It's just the total number of possible outcomes. Now, when we're rolling a dice and we're talking about the sample space of a dice, when you roll it, we're talking about what are all of the outcomes you have when you roll that dice. And so let's go ahead and write that out first because it's gonna be very important for us to have that out. So the sample space of a dice, remember that when we're writing out sample space, we tend to use these curly brackets to indicate that's the sample space. And when you roll a dice, one of six things can happen. You're either gonna roll a number one, two, three, four, five, or six. That is our sample space. Those are the only outcomes that can occur when you roll a dice. So that means that when we're dealing with our fraction here for probability, when we're rolling a single dice, that the denominator there will always be a six because that's always the total number of possible outcomes. So let's kind of play with this idea of having a single dice, rolling it, and trying to find the probability of these different events. Let's say I wanna find out the probability that we roll a three. So that's what we're interested in. I wanna roll the dice and I want a three to be the outcome. So to find out this probability, we do know that it will be a fraction. And as I mentioned a little while ago, that the denominator is the total number of possible outcomes that's just our sample space. We see here that the sample space for a dice is six. So what goes on the bottom of this fraction will be a six because there are six possibilities. Now we wanna find out what are the number of ways a three can happen. Well, when I'm looking at our sample space, I only see three occurring once. Because three occurs once, that means that's the only way it's gonna pop up when we roll a dice. That means that our numerator here will be a one. So the probability of rolling a three is one out of six. Let's go ahead and do another example. Let's say I wanted to find out the probability of rolling an even number. So what we do is we have to set up that fraction and we have to start to think about what, how many numbers in our sample space are even. Now again, I like to start off with the denominator. It tends to be the easiest. Remember the denominator is just the sample space. 
how many numbers are there, how many outcomes are there when you roll a dice, there still are going to be six. So that's not changing for rolling a dice. Now I have to think of what are the number of ways an even number can happen. So what I have to do is I have to come and look at my sample space here and I have to figure out how many of those numbers are even. So as I go through, I see that two, four, and six are all even numbers. Those would satisfy that probability of rolling an even number. Since there are three even numbers, that is the number I'm gonna write as my numerator. So the probability of rolling an even number ends up being three out of six. So that is our probability, but I think we can reduce that. We always wanna reduce fractions when possible. Three over six does reduce to one half. Let's do another example. Let's say I wanted to know what's the probability that I roll a five or higher. So I'm interested in rolling a number that's greater than or equal to five. So I'm gonna set up my equal sign there. And again, probability, always gonna be a fraction. So let's set that up. We know our denominator is not changing here because our sample space is still a six. And now we get to go through and work out what's the probability that we roll a number greater than or equal to five. So I'm gonna take a look at our sample space here and I'm gonna circle all of the numbers that are greater than or equal to five. Well, I think five is equal to five and six is greater than five. And at looking at the rest of these numbers, they're all less than five. So now I know that out of a sample size of six, there are two possibilities there for numbers that are greater than or equal to five. Because of that, my fraction here will be two out of six or two six. Again, we wanna reduce when possible. I know that two six will reduce to one over three because two goes into both two and into six. Alrighty, let's do one more final example before we close out this video. Let's say I know that the probability, or I want to know the probability of a number and say that I want the number now to be less than five. Kind of the opposite of what we just did here. I know I wanted this to be greater than or equal to five. Now I want the numbers that are less than five. So we're going to set up our fraction. We know that six will be on the bottom since that's our sample space. And now I have to go through that sample space and find all of the numbers less than five. Well, one is less than five, two is, three is, four is, five is not less than five, five is equal to five, and six is greater than five. So we're kind of seeing the flip side of this, that if I'm looking for the numbers less than five, there are four numbers to choose from, which means in my fraction here, my numerator will be four over six. Four over six, that's going to reduce to two over three. Now because, and I wanna kinda of focus on this for a second, because of these two problems here, if we notice I ended up with one third and I ended up with two thirds. And hopefully you notice that if I take one third and I add that to the two thirds, I end up with three over three or one. Now I'm ending up with one because these two probabilities that I'm talking about, they're actually spanning my entire sample space. Think about that for a second. If I was asking you to find the probability of the numbers greater than or equal to five or less than five, I'm actually just talking about all those numbers. So if you ever come across a probability situation like this, where you're talking about the numbers greater than or equal to five, but then you're also talking about the probability of the numbers less than five, you end up seeing that I'm covering my entire sample space, 
when you cover your entire sample space, those probabilities should add up to one. Okay, one refers to the entire sample space being picked. You are for sure getting a number from that sample space. All right, guys, I hope this video helped kind of clear up how to set up fractions for probability. And hopefully you're kind of understanding a little more how rolling a dice has a bunch of different probability examples hidden in it. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.